Well, Dr. Brian, welcome. And uh, I know we're talking about diabetes of the brain, such a hot topic. So let's talk about the connection between blood sugar dysregulation, insulin resistance, and brain health. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Dave. Appreciate it, man. And this is a, a really, really important topic. It's one that I don't think people like to think about, but it's sort of, uh, no pun intended, sort of in the back of the mind as just one of those things that no one ever wants to deal with. You know, like it's probably if you can list out some of the worst things to suffer with in your old age, Alzheimer's or dementia would be probably at the top of just about everybody's list. So it's uh, it's an important thing. And uh, one thing that, you know, I think we can help people to understand is that there's a lot you can do to prevent it um, if you focus and pay attention on keeping the brain healthy. And I'm glad you mentioned insulin resistance because really uh, Alzheimer's disease and in fact, all forms of dementia, including uh, Lewin body dementia and vascular dementia, have uh, one thing in common, and that is their connection to metabolic health or poor metabolic health, metabolic dysfunction, as uh, I like to call it. And it's really more about insulin resistance than diabetes. You know, this is, uh, we, we talk about type 3 diabetes has, has been uh, coined as diabetes of the brain. Um, I don't love the term because uh, you really don't need to have high blood sugar, which is the characteristic of diabetes, to develop dementia. Um, it's it's really it's about insulin resistance, which is the underlying cause of type two diabetes and pre diabetes and uh, you know many uh, cases of obesity and overweight and and PCOS and other things like that. Uh, but it is also the root of I would venture to say most cases of dementia of of all kinds. Yeah, and that's really interesting that you said that. You don't actually have to have high blood sugar because typically when people think about, and this is really how, how diabetes is diagnosed, is high blood sugar over 126 uh, fasting blood sugar. But somebody could have a normal blood sugar on a, on a lab test or you know even if they're checking their blood sugar on their own, but their insulin may be through the roof. And most doctors are not actually testing your fasting insulin levels, which is a great test to look at, and your body may be putting out so much insulin in an attempt to try to get the sugar out of the bloodstream and put it into the cells. And so let's talk a little bit about the dynamics there. What is, Why is insulin so important and why is insulin sensitivity so important to keep blood sugar under control? Yeah, good question. So uh, insulin is uh, really, I mean, it's hard to rank them, but one of the most important hormones in the body, we certainly could not live without it. Just ask anybody with type one diabetes who doesn't make insulin, how important insulin is for their life. Uh, and uh, you'll you know quickly find out that this is a uh, right. this is this is a life or death or so you, know, we you can't need get insulin. nutrients into a cell. I mean, you can't get sugar, right. nutrients right. like magnesium. You can't get them into the cell without insulin. So it's literally like right. a key that opens the door, right? Yeah. So, uh, you know, when diabetes was first described, um, you know, hundreds of years ago, it was uh, described as basically, a you know, almost like we see in late stage cancer, the pe people were withering away because they couldn't store anything. So they couldn't store fat, they couldn't store carbs, they couldn't maintain muscle, they couldn't even hold on to minerals. So everything was just liquefying in the body coming out through the urine. So in the, in the urine, you would see high sugar, you'd see high ketones, you'd see high sodium, you'd see all of this stuff just pouring out of the body because there's no insulin to hold it in. And so, yeah, that's what insulin does. And so it's so important, but you can imagine if you have too much insulin, then too much gets held back. So you get uh, too much fat in storage. You know, you get uh, the uh, kidneys hold on to too many of those um, uh, you know, important uh, minerals, which are electrolytes and important for fluid dynamics in the body. So our blood pressure goes up because we're retaining those. And that's ultimately what leads to this metabolic dysfunction. So we get inflammation, high blood pressure, 
we get overweight and obese. And all of that is sort of the other side of the coin from what I described of these people withering away. They're sort of in this chronic state of storage and growth, you know, of uh, fat tissue and so forth. So, uh, so then you ask, well, what causes high insulin? And high insulin can come both uh, sort of acutely from uh, cert certain dietary influences, like if you eat a high sugar, high carbohydrate diet, you're going to get a huge insulin surge, and it can come chronically. And that usually is due to uh, a poor metabolic health state, which largely comes from bad body composition. So, you know, we've got too much fat storage, not enough muscle mass. And so the body shifts and, and the body becomes insulin resistant, which we mentioned earlier, and then shifts into this high insulin state. And it's that high insulin that ultimately leads to uh, cardiovascular stress, uh, endothelial dysfunction, and things like Alzheimer's disease and, and brain uh, issues. In fact, even cognitive dysfunction, we'll see that in people who are insulin resistant. <music>